ESPN 94.1 FM at AM 930 present The Drive. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Local then, local now. Never FDIC. Welcome in. It is the Monday, September 23rd edition. Your drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan, joined as I always am on Monday by the young Thundering Herd quarterback himself, Dave Walsh. You can join the program by calling Miller Lite phone lines at 877-420-TALK. That's 877-420-8255. Miller Lite, hold true, great taste only. 96 calories it is the original light beer of course we are as we mentioned at the union pub and grill today 1125 fourth avenue in huntington here every monday for the show and we got a lot to get into dave of course last week the thundering herd were off that means we didn't have a game on saturday what did you do i had no idea what to do on this saturday i think i just took it easy watched a little television one of them being the marshall opponent this week uh, when I turned TV off, they were way, 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 way behind. When I woke up the next morning, I found out they scored more points in a half than they had scored all season and actually won. So hey, that hey. makes Cincinnati's win over that team. You say they look very good. And now that Cincinnati comes here. Which game are you watching, Dave? S- Washington State, UCLA. Was okay. On 10-30. Okay. UCLA was getting hammered at halftime. Okay. Then they came back and won, I think, 67-64. All right, I was typical, make sure. typical defensive struggle out there in the pack. What, I was going to make sure, trying to figure out which game you were watching. I was a little confused there. Yeah, and then UCLA scored 50 points in 19 minutes. More points than they scored all year. Okay, I was making sure you knew which game you were talking yes. about. I know which game we're talking about. Of course, that's Marshall and Cincinnati, and that's yes. coming up. We'll have that for you right here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Uh, several games going on that Saturday in Conference USA. Middle Tennessee will take on 14th-ranked Iowa. You have Florida Atlantic taking on Charlotte. That's your NFL Network game, by the way. I'm, that one piques my interest. The way Charlotte is playing, I know, was sacrificial Saturday, but Charlotte is better than what we anticipated being. Uh, them and Southern Miss ran to a buzzsaw in uh, Clemson, Alabama, but a lot of people do that. East Carolina is at Old Dominion. I'm going to go on the record and say East Carolina loses. They very easily could. Old Dominion gave – they were ahead of Virginia there until the fourth quarter. They're going to they get one of those. The entire, yes. They're going to get one of those real soon. But East Carolina, I think if Old Dominion plays the way they've played as of late, East Carolina might go in and get a loss. That would yeah. be interesting to see. And then we get into some Conference USA action with Louisiana Tech at Rice, and UTEP will be at Southern Miss, and UAB will be at Western Kentucky. And then out of conference, it'll be Houston at North Texas. North Texas, if they can't beat Houston – you know who's there? I'm. I know who's there. Yeah, the hair. Yeah, and he's one in three. Holgerson's hair is one in three. <laughs> and they lost to Tulane the other night. Ma- I, Mountaineer fans two. are not missing him no. at all. And and W is three and one right now. I mean, it's crazy. How you like me now? <laughs> uh, hope you enjoy your time in Houston. I yes. mean, hey, as long as he's happy, I'm happy. Yeah. But yep. <laughs> if I'm Houston, I'm not happy right no. now. No. And if they get beat by North Texas, even worse. But North Texas is going to be a, a tough out for anybody. Yes, especially at their place. Oh, yeah, especially at their place. One of those Conference USA things like, okay, AAC, Conference USA, we get you. That's would be a feather for the conference if they could take them down. Well, Marshall would like to get Cincinnati, and that's going to be the focus of our show today as uh, we're here game week. Last week was sort of that off week, getting ready to get ready. It was yes. get yourself ready, get ready to get ready, and – they were talking about rest, and you're going to hear a lot about rust versus rest all <laughs> week long. And, you know, what did this week do? Yeah. These guys were happy to have the off week, and we'll talk a little bit more about it. But it's finally a game week again. Um, now, I know the talk has been getting a couple – because Cincinnati was off as well. So yeah. they had the off week. Marshall's had the off week. And Doc seems to like having a couple of off weeks in the middle of the schedule because these kids have been going since camp, which was in August. So, in, in all honesty, we only have seen them on the football field a few weeks. They've been going at it since August. Right. Doc appreciates this week off, and uh, early in November they'll get another week off, which will be uh, come in handy. But now with Cincinnati, they played their quote-unquote rival last week and handled them pretty easily. They've dominated that rivalry, so to speak, as uh, Marshall got a one over Ohio University. And uh, you lost this past Saturday. John Gregory, former herd player, calling that game for ESPN+. Plus. Haven't had a chance to talk to him, but uh, OU's now one and three. They're better than one and three. I think they are, but uh, Louisiana smoked them pretty good. 
Still better than one and three. I know. I, I don't know, though, what it's going to take for them. They've got a good quarterback. That's what It's funny, though. You think UCLA played the first game at Cincinnati, get 14 points. They got 50 in one half this past Saturday night while everybody was asleep. So, I don't, did they just wake up? I don't know. But it, that's good on Cincinnati's resume. And if Marshall Lever wants to enhance theirs, there's another chance. I mean, you can say what you want to about Western and Boise. I'm sorry, Boise. 14 points is all they scored two weeks ago. They tra- they beat Air Force the other day handily. But they're the team right now that everyone's looking yeah, at for UCF the group UCF lost five. a game. Yeah, UCF actually That's lost a game. What we haven't talked about yet. Yeah. 27-game regular season winning streak. That's including conference title games over. And so now they get beat by a modified Philly special. They call it a pit <laughs> special, which was basically a reverse pass to the quarterback in the end zone. And now UCF is not going to be a team we talk about getting a playoff bid. No. There was talk that maybe this would be the year. Last year, maybe there, that was the year. There was talk that they should get a shot. And they get beat by a middle-of-the-pack team, not an elite ACC team. Middle of the road. Middle of the road team in Pitt. Yeah. And they get beat. They still are a ranked team, but nobody's talking about, hey, they're going to go play for the national title now. Right. That conversation's over. All they can hope for is they can get a New Year's Six Bowl. They can get an Access Bowl bid. And right now, that's Boise. They're that's the top Boise's kid. to lose. Boise's Until to we lose. see the rankings. Yes. And the rankings are going to be different because the AP rankings right now has Boise ahead of them. The committee could come in and say, no, that wasn't yeah. good enough. But you lose to a pit, how bad? bad is that loss or is that an okay loss if Boise stays undefeated that's probably going to write itself and you're not going to have that conversation or debate what if Marshall could have beat Boise right now Marshall Mm -hmm. would be undefeated now they got to get past Cincinnati so we're we're really putting the cart before everything else here (laughs) but still it's still fun to talk about they could have been undefeated at this point and have an opportunity to beat Cincinnati. Now, if they beat Cincinnati, that's, there's still going to be a yeah. pretty good that's season for one. them. Yeah. Three and one out of going into, October, into league play, three and one, not bad. I would take that. And the loss was 14-7 to a nationally ranked team on their field. They don't win very many games with 14 points scored. Of course, they don't have many games. They give up seven, but they only scored 14 and one. But three and one, Doc would surely take that going to conference play, knowing middle – has to go to Iowa this week before they open up with Marshall next week. The question here is, how good is Cincinnati compared to Boise? Boise and Cincinnati, completely different teams. I know. We'll hear about it from the players a little bit later on. But how different is this Bearcats team? And is Boise the best team Marshall's face? And if that's the case, then this should be really competitive with Marshall and Cincinnati because I think they're really good. Yeah, it should be a very That Ohio State game, game does not indicate how no, good they are. Ohio State's going to do that to a lot of people. Ohio State is, like you mentioned, they do that to everybody. Look what they did to poor Miami, 70-some points. They trashed Cincinnati. They do it to everybody. They do it to everybody. They even did it to Indiana the other day, and I know that one big game is down the road, and uh, all heck's broken loose in Ann Arbor after what happened to them at Wisconsin. So, Ohio State's for real. They are for real. All I know is nobody's talking about Navy undefeated right now. 2-0, <laughs> and o, undefeated. They got Memphis on the 26th, so they'll yeah. be back at it. They beat East Carolina. They're, you know – they're on top right now. Nobody's talking about it. First in the American Athletic West. Right. Come on, maybe the Navy's going to be the team this year. I, I don't know. <laughs> and that's know. a future Marshall opponent home and away. I hey, love future. it. What about Tulane three and one? Come on, let's talk about Tulane. And they got and they uh, one of those three wins came against you know who down in Houston. When they, the two guys for Houston, I watched the replay, ran into each other, and their guy got free and scored the winning touchdown. I'm seriously, I'm going to I'm going to front Tulane right now because they lose to Auburn 24-6. Other than that, they beat FIU, so already they beat the team that a lot of people thought might win the East Division in Conference USA. Mm-hmm. Uh, they beat Houston, but then again, a lot of people were doing that, <laughs> so I don't know what you take there. And they've got Army, Connecticut. They've got that uh, tough, tough American schedule to go through. Let's talk Tulane. They could yeah. be they could be your New Year's Six team right there, there Tulane. There you go. There you go. I think uh, right now, though, it, as you mentioned a minute ago, Boise's to lose. After what they've done, UCF, you thought the world ended the way the people were talking about them losing a one-point game on a special play. And they still have to play in the, in, in the league. They have After this game this weekend, UCF comes into Cincinnati the following week. Is it more the fans that are talking than the team? The fans feel that – I'm sorry, I do not miss them in Conference USA only because they were a bunch that thought that uh, they were the best thing coming. Yep. 
Uh, now, I would love to play them again, but they're, they're not going to be on the schedule anytime soon. But, uh, boy, let me tell you, they were a pretentious bunch. They and I usually that. don't speak out about fan <laughs> groups, but let me, let's me let talk about Central Florida for a minute. I don't miss them, and I was happy. I was the biggest Pitt fan on the planet. On, on, <laughs> right on, right yeah, on, huh? I was rooting for Pitt for that one. I was cheering. Now, I usually don't cheer for Pitt. I'll take the, I'll take the Pitt win that day. Yes. Yes. It was, and, you know, and Pitt's middle of the road. Right now, Clemson is it in that league. I, they can say what they want to say. It's Clemson, everybody else, maybe Virginia. SEC is by far and away the best league. And pay, pay attention to Morgantown. They went into Kansas. Uh, Kansas, But, hey, they got a W on the road. Whoever thought they'd be 3-1 and one right now? The schedule kind of allows it. Though. Well, it sets up for them. Now the big boys come up. We'll see what happens. You gotta, you gotta give them credit though. They bounce back quite nicely. Yes. They, get, they get beat down, and then they come back and they really respond. Yeah, on the road, it's Kansas, but it's still, it's still a road. I get yeah. it. I understand. And they showed a picture of the stadium. There was not a whole lot of people there. I'm wondering how many will show up Saturday night, five o'clock, because this game you mentioned a minute ago, a lot of people are talking about it. I think people. There's will show a lot up. of ramifications here if they ever get the W that they need. Of awesome September, it sets them up for league play. I think people will show up just because they haven't seen the herd in a couple weeks. Right. They just had the fever. Whoever, anybody, will take against anybody. And it happens to be Cincinnati, so not far for them to travel, but uh, it'll be an important game, a fun game to watch. Yeah, I mean, you're right. Um, West Virginia's schedule ramps up immediately because <laughs> you've got Texas, Iowa State, Oklahoma, Baylor, <laughs> throw them in there. Texas Tech, Kansas State, Oklahoma State, TCU. Yeah, it ramps up. Yes. We'll see what they're really – I think Texas is going to be the true test. We'll see what yeah. this team is truly about because you can't judge this team based on James Madison, NC State, Kansas and the victories, and Missouri and the loss. You can't judge this team uh, They won that. three and got handed pretty badly out at, at Missouri. They got beat pretty badly. But as you mentioned, they came back and got Kansas after what happened there in NC State. Uh, scored a lot of points, so we'll see what happens. But now they get to the meet of the schedule. Here comes the Texas, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. We'll see what they're made of. Coach Brown knows what's going on when Texas comes to town to start this run. All you need three wins, kids, and you're bowl eligible. That's yes. all you need, three wins. Where do the three come? Uh, Baylor maybe? Baylor had a hard time with Rice, 21-13. TCU maybe? Mm, maybe at the end. I don't know about Oklahoma State. Uh, so that's a toss-up. They lost to Texas in a close one. Yes. So I'm not going to give that to uh, anybody. you got to get the three more wins. Yeah. You get three wins out of this group, you're going bowling. So yeah, that's, um, that'd, be that'd be a great first year. That'd be a great first year. A lot of people didn't think that would happen. And, Doc, if they get this one Saturday, they'll be halfway there. No, Marshall's going bowling. I'll just go yeah. ahead and write that down. I, <laughs> I declare it. Marshall is going bowling. I don't know if it's going to be a football game or in a bowling alley, but they're going bowling. <laughs> but, no, I think Marshall's on their way. Right now they've got the deal with Cincinnati, and we're going to talk about that game when we continue. Uh, player day today at Marshall, so we'll hear from um, Isaiah Green, Chris Jackson among the players we're going to hear from, get their thoughts on Cincinnati later on. We'll hear what Cincinnati head coach Luke, Luke Fickles had to say about the Thundering Herds. So that's all when we continue with today's edition of The Drive here at the Union Pub and Grill on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. You're listening to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Today was player day at Marshall University. That's right. Uh, we get to actually talk about a game. Yeah. Last week we were talking rest, about rest, rest and rec. Yeah, rest. Now we're talking about the actual game itself, and Cincinnati is the opponent for the Thundering Herd. And this is a, a team that is projected to be a contender for the, uh, the American title. They could uh, win the East Division. they got to get past Cincinnati to win the East Division. They've got Cincinnati has to deal with Temple, South Florida, UConn, East Carolina. And right now they're 2-1. and one. UCF is 3-1. and one. So no talk of a national championship bid coming out of the American. But at the same time, there is talk that Cincinnati could maybe topple UCF. And if they win the American, they could get it maybe a, uh, a, maybe a New Year's Six Bowl. Yeah. But Boise is going to have something to say about that for sure. But Marshall's got an opportunity here. If they can beat Cincinnati, then they're going to have a three-win, one-loss non-conference record with the one loss coming against Boise, a team that a lot of people think are better than Cincinnati. But you can't let that really 
guide you here no. in this one because every team is different. Every team proposes a different challenge and a different task for the Thundering Herd. So that was the question today when we were talking to the players. And Isaiah Green, he's the guy who's going to lead the offense for the Thundering Herd. So I want to get his thoughts on Cincinnati. Front seven, they they have a very good front seven. You know the D line is, they get after it. And, you know the linebackers, they big, physical and athletic guys. So that's the first thing that just popped out to me. I'm, I'm watching film. Chris Jackson also has to contend with those Cincinnati Bearcats himself. So uh, ask Chris same question. Hey, what do you see when you look at Cincinnati? First thing is um, on the offense, you know, the quarterback is kind of what the offense is centered around. You know, he, he drives them, and then, you know, they have they have some great running backs. They have a few great running backs, you know, that definitely uh, carry the load for the team. You know, they, uh, they run the ball very well. And, then, you know, on the outside, they have some receivers and a tight end that can seemingly get open whenever they want to. So, you know, we just got to come in and be really prepared and uh, be on our A game. They got to be careful, though. I mean, you beat Miami down 35-13, and – yeah, there's a talent difference there. Yes, everybody's going to get in the in the action here, especially when you beat them. And of course, the Ohio State game really not a true measure of this team. I mean, they are a, a team that beats UCLA, beats Miami of Ohio, gets beat down by Ohio State. Can't gauge them just yet. And Ohio State has beaten down everybody so far to this point. But the big one you just mentioned, UCLA. They beat UCLA which scores 67 points Friday night. So uh, thank God they waited some time. So that looks good for UC uh, Cincinnati. And if Marshall takes down Cincinnati, that's a feather in their cap. Cincinnati is averaging 172 yards on the ground and 198 in the air. So almost a, a pretty balanced attack there. 63rd best team in the country right now for rushing, and they like to run the ball a lot, but they also use that as a tool because they have big play capability. So Chris was asked about the fact that, you know, what does UC like to do? They like to really run that ball just to lull you guys back there and pass defense, mm -hmm. lull you, because then you're thinking run, and here it comes over your head. Yep, Exactly. They definitely do that, you know. They 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 run the ball three times in a row, four times in a row, and then they come with a big shot play to to one of their tight ends or one of their outside receivers. So, just our focus, we got to be, we really got to be locked in because they do a great job at it. They're not just throwing deep balls just to throw them, you know. They they they're completing a high percentage of them. So you know, we get definitely be be focused and locked in in order to uh, try to contain it. One thing about Marshall up to this point with Brad Lambert now the new coordinator. Big plays, they limit them. The biggest play I can remember so far was, was the uh, Mr. Wart taking off on that long touchdown run. But other than that, teams that have scored have earned it. They have run 8, 10, 12 plays. There's no quick one or two boom over the top, burn your type of that situation. Brad makes them earn the drive. And if you mess up along the way, so be it. If not, it, it, it takes some clock away from you and still gives your offense some time to rest. Here's Channing Haynes' thoughts on his assignment this week, taking care of them big boys. Uh, they, they're going to run the ball, that's for sure. Um, they're from the last time we played them two years ago. So I think the, uh, the most part that stands out is their running game. Uh, I don't think their running game was, a, was that strong two years ago. So it's definitely something that's sticking out with the uh, type of tailbacks we have in the backfield. So they're a better running team than he remembers a couple of years ago. And I think that's a fair assessment. Well, Mr. Fickle came from Ohio State, and they kind of do run and passing, even Steven, so to speak. Uh, both excellent in both phases of the football game. And he uh, took his lumps the first year, but he got them back last year. And now he's hoping for bigger and better things uh, this fall, starting or continuing Saturday night when he uh, brings his team here. Let's get Kane Madden's thoughts on dealing with Cincinnati from the defensive side of the ball. Here's Kane Madden's impression. Oh, I mean, their whole defense is uh, veterans. We've seen them two years ago, and uh, they're, uh, they're just big and fast, very physical team. That's the one thing right there that I remember about Cincinnati. And Mr. Kelly, Brian Kelly, now in Notre Dame, he used to coach at Cincinnati when Marshall played, and they beat him handily both times. Cincinnati might be the most physical team Marshall plays this year from just a physical, physical standpoint. They'll be one-on-one. -on -one. They'll be sore come Sunday morning. They'll be sore come Sunday morning. They'll make you earn it. If you get it, you will earn it. 
a very physical football team. That's the way they were. That's his modus operandi. No trick orations, maybe a little bit, but it's it's basically fundamentals he's going to get you with. Unlike this Ohio game, there's actually a little history here, just a little. So some of these guys remember the Cincinnati game from last time. And I asked Kane, yeah, what's different about these guys? Anything change? They uh, look like they stuck to the same game plan, just being physical and big team. I know we, we saw a couple of them. There's a couple people that graduated. So uh, that's going to help us. But uh, it's just the same. MO. They're going to run around and make plays. We just got to – we just got to uh, – we just gotta go out there and play. Coach speak translated and <laughs> player speak. And I can hear it now tomorrow. Doc will say the three phases: don't turn the ball over, be good on special teams, scores a couple, three touch, and, and you know the same coach speak there again will work. And that's what Coach Fickle does: don't beat yourself first, make them do it. One of the questions that Kane Madden was asked was what impressed him about the Cincinnati interior defensive line. They're big and fast. They're really good with their hands. It's, it's hard to block someone when they never want to give up. So they're just high, high motor guys, and they just want to make plays. Again, coach speak to a degree. You yeah, know. but that's true. I can remember seeing them up at the stadium. They were very hands-on defensive side, showing you off, shoving you aside, and going for whoever's got the ball, quarterback, running backs, find the ball and go get it. That's what they teach. Get, get off your man, go find the football, and bring it down. Attack, attack, attack. No sitting back and reading. They're going after you. We're going to get Luke Fickle's opinion of the Thundering Herd when we continue. We're here today at the Union Pump and Grill, 1125 4th Avenue in Huntington. Paul Swan and Dave Walsh with you. It's The Drive presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Now, back to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We're coming to you today from the Union Pub and Grill, 1125 4th Avenue in Huntington. Now, they put the banner back up because, well, I think Herb thought you forgot. Yes. If you forgot, it's here now to remind you. If you walk in here every Monday, all day, all night, you can get $2 call shots. You can get $1.50 domestic bottles every Monday. Right here at the Union Pub and Grill, you could watch Monday Night Football here. That's a thought. Yes. Hey, Monday Night Football, you could come down here, watch some NFL action. We've got the Bears. We've got the Redskins. It's all coming up tonight. You can't watch. What, what, you don't like that game? <laughs> eh, well, well. Your face you were making, I thought you were I was, there were some twitching better games. a little bit. There were some better games already played, but that's the one on the schedule when they make it out. It looks good to everybody zero zero when they make the schedule. Yeah, but your face was tw- – I, mean, I thought you were flashing back to 66-6. to six. No, no, not that bad. But I was having – they were showing some highlights of uh, yesterday, Kansas City and uh, Baltimore, and Mr. Jackson made a good account of himself yesterday. But it'll be interesting tonight, the Bears, the Bears. Yeah, it's coming up tonight, 8-15 on ESPN. You can, of course, catch that game if you can't watch it. On ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930, of course, the game we're talking about the all week long will be Marshall and Cincinnati at Joan C. Edwards Stadium. And today I um, had a chance to listen in on the Luke Fickle teleconference. Luke was asked a question early in the teleconference because it basically came down to this listening to the press conference he was giving today. Off week, a lot of people were talking off week. And then my guy comes in, Chuck Landon. My guy comes in. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck. Busts that up yeah. easily. So, Mr. Landon, I'm sure uh, some of this will be featured in his work, yes. comes in and just wants to get Luke Fickle's impression of Marshall. So, here's Coach Fickle, head coach of the Cincinnati Bearcats. Here's his thoughts when talking about Marshall. Very talented. Uh, obviously, we played them two years ago here, and, you know, it was they stomped us pretty good. Um, you know, and, and I think they were very talented obviously then and I, and I i think i see the very similar things that's why i said earlier that there's not as big a discrepancy in what people think and i don't just mean that from um our league but i mean that in college football in general and uh you know so for marshall to me i mean i, I see a lot of talent i think obviously quarterback wise running back wise um and receiver wise is where it starts but i think for marshall you know the guys they've got up front offensively and defensively um, returning and guys that have played a lot of football it maybe is what makes them 
who they are and the strength. And in you know, in the past, you'd probably say the you know, the Randy Moss of the world and the athletes that they've you know, had over the past few years. Uh, I think this team might be a little bit different. They still have those athletes, maybe not as you know nationally known uh, yet in some ways, but I think up front on both sides of the football is where they're you know better than uh, you know than than what I've seen. Uh, not just I've seen what we've played this year, but even from what I know in the past, we've been playing them two years ago. That makes sense. That does make sense. Right now, Marshall's strengths are the offensive line and defensive line. Receivers, I'm still waiting for um, OB to take the field, Taven to show up from the U.K. days. We don't know who's going to be in running back. If um, Doc will lay on it, let us know tomorrow how Mr. Knox is doing. Will he be back to play? He's had two weeks to rest. If not, you're, you're handing the ball to a freshman. So a lot of responsibility falls on the guys up front, both sides of the football. The follow-up question from, again, from the columnist. Given the columnist is due, the uh, columnist wanted to know when he asked uh, Luke earlier today uh, in the teleconference, um, what will it take to beat Marshall, right? I mean, it's, a, it's yeah. an easy question. Yeah. Um, here's, um, here's Luke's coach answer. <laughs> coach speak. Well, we got to score more points than they do, obviously. I think that that's pretty simple. <laughs> I don't like to over overdo this game. I mean, it's still a little bit early. Obviously, we had the bye week, but – for the bye week, we, we really focused on ourselves and try not to get too far ahead. Um, I think there's a balance there. Um, but I think, you know, we, we got to go and we got to play. We got to play cleaner than what we have. I think, you know, we had 11 penalties in the last game that we had. And, you know, I think when you when you get against really good talent and things like that, you can't put yourself in those situations. Um, you know, especially the ones that I call are undisciplined penalties, the pre-snap penalties or the post-snap penalties, not the aggressive ones. Um, and when you're playing somebody as talented as Marshall and you put yourself at first and 15, it's going to be really difficult. First and 20 on a holding call, um, you know, first and five, giving them those, you know, things uh, that, you know, instead of making them try to earn everything that they get. I mean, um, that's for me from the get-go, from the start. It's got to be, you know, we got to do that, especially going on the road. Going on the that road. sounds like a coach. Yeah, going on the road, scoring more points. Got to do that. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty brainy, but the one thing he emphasized, make them earn it. No cheap ones, the penalties. The aggressive ones, yes, but no, after the play, you have a, a personal foul, late hit or something. Discipline is important on the road. At home, too. On the road is important. And Doc would say the same thing. Play disciplined football. Limit the turnovers. You know, 11 penalties. Well, I think he said 11 last week, and they still won handily. Against Miami, they're 30 minutes apart, they, but they have won 14 straight in that series that Miami still leads, believe it or not. So th- I can understand what Luke is coming from. Make Marshall earn it. It's their home field. Make them earn it. Take care of the football and see what happens. Play smart, disciplined game, and we'll see what happens in the 60 minutes. They're a little stingy uh, on the, the stat board. They only give up 179 uh, contest in the air. They only give up 132 on the ground. Marshall, in the comparison, gives up 232 in the air, and they give up 144 on the ground. Um, overall, yards allowed, Cincinnati gives up an average of 311 a contest. Marshall's a little worse, 377. But at the same time, Marshall's been very good at bending, not breaking. And I know Doc, a few weeks ago, when he was asked about that Boise State game, said, hey, yeah, they played great, but they didn't get us off the field fast enough. That Ohio game, I, I don't even know what <laughs> That was not Marshall, Ohio. That was too high scoring of a game. That was 33-31, you know, and hitting the goalpost on an extra point attempt. And uh, thank God Mr. Work did not get the ball one more time in his hands. Marshall was able to run the clock out, get the W, rest up. And now, uh, as you mentioned, here comes Cincinnati to town. Let's see. uh, They should break 30, 30, 30,000 in attendance on this one. Cincinnati might be a traveling crowd because it's uh, 5 o'clock. Over by 8, you're home by 11. That's a possibility. Well, they'll bring some people. And uh, Marshall – Make it the what in quote the twelfth man, like some of the schools do. Turn it into the twelfth man. As we mentioned, Marshall's given up uh, in all the games they've played an average of one hundred and forty four point seven on the ground. And one of the questions that was asked of Coach Fickle, he talked a little bit about that Marshall run defense. No, they've done a great job. Uh, obviously, they play physical. They play tough. Uh, I think you know they they've got some. Some forces to be reckoned with inside. Uh, I think that obviously makes it a lot better. But they, they, you can tell that they're, you know, they're, they're going to be cued into stopping the run. They're playing eight-man box and a lot of things. And I think they do a really good job at bringing safeties down in different spots. And 
I think that makes it difficult on your run game as to who you're identifying and who you're working towards because sometimes you don't know if a safety's coming down from the field, if he's coming down in the middle, or if he's coming down outside. So uh, the combination of what they do really, really makes it difficult, not just um, – you know, in the passing game, but also in the run game, because you know, it's a lot about IDing and figuring out and making sure you're comboing and blocking to the right guys. And uh, when they do what they do, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Big thing, confusion. I've said it many, many times. The quarterback comes to line, you look, and they've got the box loaded. The guys back out, come in, back out. You don't know if they're coming or going. Eight men in the box, and they back out and listen to three. Something to make you just hesitate one half a second or something. A little cloud of doubt as opposed to going, I don't care where they are, we're going to run it down their throat. That's not going to happen. Brad Lambert, attack, attack, attack. We've got more on the way. We're coming to you today live from the Union Pub and Grill, 1125 4th Avenue in Huntington. You can join us here every Monday for the show. We are presented this hour by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. we got more on the way. It's The Drive, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Here today at the Union Pub and Grill where you can join us every Monday, 1125 4th Avenue in Huntington. I'm Paul Swan. I've got the former young Thundering Yard quarterback. He's no longer young, but no, he's still I was at the hospital day trying to get a little bit of my youth back. Did it work? We'll find out. I'm walking better than I was. If you'd seen me earlier today, you went, what's your problem, uh, buddy? You have too much to know. It's just the left knee went out, but uh, it's one of those things. You'll find out later on in life. You'll be doing the same thing I was doing. Okay. Hopefully not. Right, Dave. And uh, just to be fair, I, I wonder all the time, I'm like, Dave, what's your problem? <laughs> that happens all the but time, you, not, not just today. But, you know, this is a big game here, but the one game really intrigues me this weekend, Florida Atlantic at Charlotte. Why does that game intrigue you? I just think Charlotte is better than what we're giving him credit. And in the lane train, if he wants to get back on the beat. If he wants to get back on the beat. NFL Network is running that game. I know. That game. It could be here. It could be here. Yeah, but they didn't get the pick until late. They no, did, they, they jumped the on left. the they jumped on the lane train a little well, they're jumping on the lane train, but they yeah. jumped on the train a little but at late. Least, at least it's a f- outlet. You have an outlet. TV's not too bad this week. You've got several games on either ESPN plus, ESPN two, ESPN three. Or um, it could be worse. Uh, you could be on uh, CBS Sports Network's Facebook page. Um, and, um, well, oh, look, Marshall is. Yes. CBS Sports <laughs> Network Facebook. Uh, Houston, North Texas, CBS Sports Network Facebook as well. And uh, that's uh, how you watch these games. And, um, you know, the funny thing is Mountaineer fans were losing their damn minds over <laughs> being on ESPN+. Plus. Losing their minds. And you were well, going like – What's wrong yeah, with that? Well, I'm, doing, I'm doing a great job on man, that. Man, four ninety nine a month. I'm rocking ESPN Plus. You're in a wizard at that, baby. <laughs> oh, lo- I mean, for, folks, I love me some ESPN Plus. Yeah, they should. And yours, your sport's not that far off. There are preseason games I, now. I've already been watching those. What I do you? Know. Yeah, I know. It, it's it's been great. I love the ESPN Plus. Yes. Um, now I'm not saying that the, it replaces terrestrial uh, or cable or satellite for broadcasting outlet, but it it, it worked for me. Yeah, and like you said, four ninety nine a month, you can't beat it. Yeah, because, uh, I mean, you know, like tonight I, I get to watch the Maple Leaves and Canadians. Only I will watch the Maple Leaves and Canadians <laughs> in exhibition. But, uh, yeah, there's so many things there. And um, I think the problem here is a lot of people were losing their minds because they just don't have the Internet infrastructure to do this. Right. You don't have the broadband infrastructure in so many parts of West Virginia. And what's funny is people are losing their minds over not being able to watch a football game. Uh, infrastructure in West Virginia has been so bad so long, and yeah. you, that's what riled you up? <laughs> Where have you been? Well, yeah, not the uh, not the every other aspect of uh, infrastructure in West Virginia, from economic to yeah. educational. No, the football game got you going. Yes. That triggered you, huh? That's kind of weird. Kind of weird. Well, it was, You're very good at the, at the ESPN Plus finding. I'm, I'm steadily improving, Well, but a long way to catch you. Well, it just depends um, if um, – you're used to using apps on your phone or if you have a smart TV and you yeah. can plug in real simple. My neighbor has mentioned that they cut the cable cords right. or whatever and go into some streaming and things. Mm-hmm. And uh, amazing what can be like at the snap of a finger, talk to your receiver, what you can watch that I can't, that he can, and pays nothing compared to what I do. Now, you, you're talking about 10 years ago. This uh, stuff was <laughs> terrible. Yes. 
But, but it's, it's gotten so much better. Yeah, I'll take the ESPN Plus all the time because uh, I watched NFL primetime on ESPN Plus last night. Right. I didn't get a chance to see it last week. Last week was the uh, return of it, and they're showing it exclusively on the Plus. And it's so much better than I remember it being. It's just Chris Berman and, uh, and Jackson, Jackson there. Yeah, oh, Tom Jackson just there. And just those guys. Those two guys. That's No commercials. No. It's just let's go. Let's, let's go. let's do this. And everything that's old is new again. And they've been doing it. They were doing it for years. Right. And now they're back doing it that way. I love it. With no commercial breaks. It was great. You know, go with it, baby. Yeah, those it, two guys. It, it was fantastic. So, yeah, I know, I know people were getting upset because they couldn't find the game. And, uh, hey, welcome <laughs> w- welcome to the future, my friends. Yes, uh, you better learn. Uh, I, you had better learn. I like the ESPN Plus. Yes. I, I didn't think I would until I got a hold of it and then started uh, uh, perusing it. Uh, let's see, top upcoming events here for, uh, hey, Thursday night, you know, I'm going to be watching some Rangers hockey. That's your I'm thing, good. Isn't it? Yeah. I'm good, yeah. I can watch the Cardinal Diamondbacks. I can watch, uh, you know, okay, I'm not going to watch soccer. I know some people would, but yeah. I, I'm not going to watch. You going to take a rain check on that one? Yeah, I'm going to take a lot of rain <laughs> checks on the soccer. But, uh, yeah, it's um, it's definitely the platform of my choice. I would rather watch a game here on ESPN Plus than I would, say, Conference USA TV. And I know Marshall's going to. Or gonna, BN. Oh, definitely, BN. yeah, definitely. It, you, I know Facebook's easy to get. You can get Facebook. That's, I remember the that's days, not that hard. But the days at the at the paper, people would call in. Is a Marshall game on this week? Yes or no? What channel? Mm-hmm. We tell them this one. And how do you get that? I don't know. I really don't. It's I, I know be the, in the paper, but right. BN and some of those. I really wasn't sure. I, I know the argument here is the struggle was to get it. Yeah, I know the argument's been. Look, you know, I want to watch the game and say I, I don't live in Huntington, so I'm not going to the game. Or I, I want to go to a uh, say I want to go to a fine establishment that is like the Union Pub and Grill in whatever part of the world you're in. And I want to watch the Marshall game, and they say what channel it's on, and you have to explain it to them. <laughs> no, instead like, of just going, boop, there it no, is. No, ESPN Plus. Yeah, boom. And I'm sure Saturday night, Herbie, boom, boop, it'll be right there. He has a lot of channels, a lot of TVs here, but several of them will have that game hey, on. Hey, look, I'm sorry. All hard fans should be at the game, not here at the Union Pub and Grill. All fans should be here. CBS Sports Network. Yeah, Facebook. Yeah, right. Yeah, Her, Herb. Um, Herb. I'm gonna get a microphone for you next week. I'm just gonna have. I'm gonna have a Herb. My, Herb Stanley microphone here for you. Okay. So, so uh, the uh, the CBS Sports Network uh, pre party will be right here at the Union right Pub here, and Grill <laughs> on Thursday. But uh, yeah, I mean, some places are a little bit more in tune to it than others. But I just thought that was funny. It's just the fact that lose your mind couldn't hey welcome to the welcome to the streaming world my friends yes, the world of stream cut the cord that's going to do it for this edition uh, we'll be back tomorrow uh, we'll hear from doc holiday tomorrow that's coming up uh, we'll have uh, more player reaction as we get ready for marshall and cincinnati for the former young thundering herd quarterback dave walsh for gabriel sellards back in the studio um i'm paul swan this has been the drive espn 94.1 fm and am 9 30. WTT7BS Huntington, your flagship home of the Marshall Thundering Herd and The Drive with Paul Swan, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 9.